Welcome everybody to our CDA risk webinar. Um, this is uh, co-hosted by uh, Quantify and Define. My name is Holger Planck. I'm a director at the Define Zurich office and predominantly working on CBA and XVA topics at the moment. And the, the actual webinar later on is going to be presenting uh, Define Germany, who will share his expertise and uh, processes in, in banks that we see out of this new uh, CBA risk framework. And uh, the second part is done by Dmitry Pugachevsky, head of uh, research at uh, Quantify. Uh, and he is going to show you some uh, numbers regarding the impact of the BCBS proposal. And uh, he also knows a lot about practical implementation of uh, CBA sensitivities and all the issues around. So, um, regarding the actual topic, uh, on July 1st, 2015, the Basel Committee has published a consultation paper on uh, the so-called review of the CVA risk, which is also known as draft number 325, and that's our topic for today. So in order to clarify a little bit, um, there are two major regs around uh, counterparty credit risk. The first one, which we normally call a CCR charge, is to reserve capital for losses out of counterparty. You may uh, strike uh, a bank and, and its existing derivatives positions. And the second one, the CVA risk charge, is to reserve capital to underpin the risk of uh, overall CVA position, mark to market, which is a cost factor. So the CVA is a cost factor to the bank's ongoing trading PL. And we are going to focus on today. So, uh, whereas the CCR2, only two after the SACCR or BCBS 279 will become effective, um, the CBA risk uh, is actually taking the other way down or the, other, or the opposite route and it's going to open up uh, for a third option between the current standard and advanced approaches and uh, it's also going to be closely aligned to FRTB. So around the draft 325, there, there's also been some general concerns in the market. Uh, for instance, there's been some comments published in the Risk Magazine early quarter four last year, and also a first case study in, in the third quarter has been uh, carried out uh, with many banks participating uh, to, to see what the new CVA risk charge will actually do uh, to the CVA risk position. So Quantify and Define has, have also worked uh, on the assessment of the potential impact and uh, we published a, a joint white paper on that uh, recently and numbers we, we've shown in there will also form a basis for today's talk. So for all further um, details I now hand over to first Sebastian and then afterwards Dmitri. Okay, so this is Sebastian. Thank you, Holger, for the introduction. Um, let's start with uh, the recent regulatory changes um, that are relevant. I think two topics that are really significant, that is on the one side the uh, new FRTB approach for market risk and on the other side the new standardized approach for counterparty credit risk, uh, this is the SACCR. Um, SACCR as the new standardized approach will um, replace methods especially the CEN effective as of January 2017 but it's owned to, to um, and probably it will also replace then in some banks tools for, for limits and also for NFS accounting. In, in market risk, um, it improves both standardized and model approach for market risk. Um, it'll become effective in January 2019, um, full revision of all model approaches for market risk. Um, yeah, these two, two significant changes um, somehow motivate now the, the CBA risk paper there where the last cons or the first consultation paper has been published last year in July, as Solga already mentioned, um, and it will somehow have significant impact on the ways how CBA risk capital charges are going to be calculated. Um, okay, go to the next slide. Just standardized approaches for um, for CRR. 
um, most significant changes are the better risk sensitivity on a portfolio basis for, um, for portfolios by, by using some kind of uh, regulatory deltas. It's going to have better recognition of netting uh, compared to CEM. And the most important thing is that it considers um, collateral not only as the current collateral, but also um, for, for future time steps in the EAD calculations by recognizing a margin period of risk. Um, also, short note, this version has already been published um, early this year. It will become effective, as I already said, in January 2019. And um, the latest revision included some changes in the risk rates. So probably this will also somehow be relevant for CDA risk at a later point of view, uh, at a later point. So the thing in, with FRTB and market risk is uh, a new standardized approach, the SATB which is based on uh, sensitivities where it, in the first step uh, sensitivities are determined for certain risk buckets, then for those risk buckets sensitivities are aggregated and then concert or considering buckets a final capital risk charge is going to be calculated. Um, furthermore, every bank has to uh, use this standardized approach um, if it's going to pillar one. Also, uh, if they are in general using an internal model approach, they also have, um, which will probably also be a regulatory flaw. Um, so uh, this approach will be the orientation for what I will not, uh, later on introduce as the new standardized approach, uh, SA, uh, FRTB for CVA risk for CVA risk capital calculation, uh, the CVA framework, which are both um, introduced by the consultation paper that has been published in July 2015. Um, the basis CVA approach can be used by every bank, um, also without FRTB approval. Um, it's rather comparable to, uh, to what's the current standardized CVA risk. Um, the FRTB CVA framework, uh, the prerequisites um, and getting supervisory approval banks may use either the SA or the IMA. Um, the standard approach would then be like the SATB approach for market risk based on sensitivities is relevant um, and some other aspects of risk management are going to be important. Um, the IMA approach with a model requires extensive CVA risk management um, and also um, the SA CVA should be. Um, we believe that, that most of the banks will only have to choose between the SA CVA and the BA CVA approach, approach uh, in this webinar. Okay, um, I'm go now going to start uh, with the basis, basic to so the formula in its simplest form um, without uh, any hedging instruments. Um, so the basic approach, the dice CVA approve, uh, approach, just with some improvements. Um, so the one is that the risk rates um, are the, to the risk rates that are used at the moment. Um, risk rates are part of the SC terms in this in this formula, where um, yeah, where risk rates and EADs are considered. So new risk rates are larger than the old ones and are now yeah a bit different. Um, on the other hand, some scaling factors have been uh, modified. Um, that comes from uh, the EAD approach that's now going to be used instead of EEPE. That was the, the former approach. Okay, furthermore, um, things have changed regarding hedging instruments. I will come back to that later. Okay, now the FRTB CVA approach, um, as I said, I will focus on the SA approach. Um, on the one hand, uh, regular exposure simulations have to be in place, at least monthly, and calculations either for pillar one or for IFRS accounting. 
Furthermore, sensitivity calculation has to be in place uh, based on the different risk factors or, or uh, buckets that are introduced by this framework. Furthermore, um, it is uh, essential to use VA calculations also for illiquid counterparties. And these are counterparties where no liquid CDS is in place. In these cases, uh, a proxy implemented or, or, or some proxy curves have to be implemented based on uh, sector rating and region. And um, then third, also um, the CDA risk management has to um, qualify by having a dedicated CDA desk in place that is responsible for risk management and hedging of CDA and that uses the exposure sensitivities um, that I've talked about earlier. Um, okay, so if those uh, by, by an institution, the A approach is uh, based on, on a formula that I do not want to discuss into too much detail. The only thing that I'd like to say is um, that there is the overall capital charge that is a, a sum of some uh, or, or weighted sum of some uh, capital charges per risk bucket. Um, it looks rather complex, but in the end, it, it just means that weighted sensitivities have to be calculated for each bucket and these are based on the aggregation of the results for each bucket, including some aspects like uh, correlation again. Um, if you're already familiar with, with FRTB from a market um, compared to there, um, some simplifications are made. There is no default risk, no nonlinearity risk like gamma uh, now considered. Um, but therefore, new asset class is introduced, which is the uh, counterparty credit spread um, where deltas are calculated. Okay, again, some uh, some changes for hedges. Um, I'm going to compare both approaches under FRTB approach um, concerning hedges. Um, for the VA approach, only credit risk hedges are applicable, no exposure hedges. Um, compared to the current framework, also proxy hedges are now um, okay um, considering uh, a haircut. For the SACVA approach, uh, apart from, from credit risk hedges, also exposure hedges are okay to use. Um, if, um, if exposure hedge instruments are recognized as mitigating the CVA desk and if they are managed by the dedicated CVA desk that I've talked about earlier. Okay, so that was a, a short introduction into uh, the topic and I'm going now to hand over to Dimitri for the results. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, hello everyone. This is Dmitry Pugachevsky. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, so now that uh, you are familiar at least uh, briefly with um, uh, some concept of new methodologies, it's uh, interesting to compare uh, what are the changes for some simple trades. Uh, so we ran tests for um, Sorry, uh, uh, for uh, so for indivi as individual trades uh, with currency swaps, also add the money in the money and out of the money, and then we uh, netted uh, net the money interest rate and cross currency swaps to see uh, netting effects. Uh, to take into account CSA, we consider two types of uh, collateral. Uh, case one, no collateral, and second, uh, a threshold is a half a million euro. Um, a margin period of risk, uh, 20 base, business days, and the minimum transferred amount is zero. Uh, in the paper, which is, uh, was just uh, published uh, uh, by Define and uh, Quantify, we also considered case of uh, um, uh, MPOR uh, zero, uh, but um, so to see basically what's the effect of um, um, a marginal period of risk uh, itself, uh, but let me remind you that regulators basically uh, stipulate that uh, as a minimum it should be uh, 10 business days. Uh, for running uh, CVA um, uh, calculations, 
uh, we uh, considered two counterparties, uh, one financial, one corporate, uh, created spreads for both our 100 basis points, recovery 40%. Also, both counterparty belongs what is uh, regulators define as uh, credit quality type 3. Uh, this is important, was important for a real market data as of the end of uh, second quarter 2015. And for calculation, we used uh, one factor labor market model. Uh, volatilities were cal calibrated sensitivities. Uh, for CVA, uh, we uh, used uh, shifts for uh, tenors for interest rate and uh, credit spread delta and relative 1% shifts for uh, FX deltas and also parallel 1% shifts for uh, Vega sensitivities uh, as uh, basically stipulated by uh, SACVA. So these are all three swaps are uh, have maturity 10 year, 100 million euro, and uh, uh, we create uh, in the moneyness by uh, changing uh, a fixed coupon uh, at par 20% uh, below par and 20% above par. Uh, what uh, if you look at the uh, tables on the right? Immediately, what you can see if you compare uh, upper row and middle row in each table, you can see that uh, BACVA are significantly higher for a current methodology. So, um, especially for uh, no uh, CSA case, I can see that for at the minor. Um, capital requirements is increased like almost 17 times than uh, all other methodologies. So it's uh, most favorable for a uh, case of uh, uh, when collateral is uh, paid. Um, so let's look now at explanation why we have such a, a huge increase from uh, current methodology uh, to BACV from uh, two sources. Uh, one, essay methodology, a standardized um, um, uh, uh, methodology, basically assigned weight 1% for this uh, type 3 credit quality. Uh, but uh, BACVA uh, will increase this weights to 10.2% for financials and 4.1% for corporates. Uh, this effect, this increase will be offset. Uh, again, Sebastian showed you uh, that uh, scaling is uh, only 1.5, and also you have kind of deleted by 1.4, uh, so its um, scaling will be just 1.1 versus 2.33, uh, which is uh, used for current methodology. Uh, still 1.9 for corporates, but that's again if exposure and default are the same. And uh, we combined our calculation uh, with SACCR introduction, so uh, we calculate for um, for uh, we calculated exposure default using SACCR, while for uh, current uh, methodology we'll calculate exposure default using CM. So uh, right um, for uh, their highest at for at the money, uh, no CSA explanation. It comes from uh, as I said two sources: one increased weights in BCV and other introduction for the, of SACCR exposure defaults. Uh, let's look now at, and as the result, um, uh, SACCR actually uh, stipulates uh, using, uh, or, or actually uh, it was always kind of uh, stipulated by regulators to use, uh, to process that as the asset type which has like the biggest uh, risk uh, in this trade. And uh, we think this is um, FX type trade because of this um, uh, exchange at maturity. So we process these trades as um, FX type, uh, FX swaps. So that's why we see a big difference with uh, previous uh, interest rate uh, cases. And uh, here, uh, maybe in relative to uh, big as in previous, but if we look at absolute terms, uh, for example, for in the money case, uh, one can see that it goes up to 30 million. So it's 25 million increase on 100 million notional. This is extremely, extremely significant. And now to look at the netting and um, for no CSA case, actually current methodology uh, seems like the most favorable and BACV uh, least favorable. Uh, while uh, in the case of collateral and CSA case, uh, SACVA uh, becomes uh, most favorable to 
um, donating. And uh, BACVA is, again, least favorable. So BACVA seems least favorable in all cases. Uh, implement uh, but, uh, two methodologies, BACVA and SACVA. Uh, first of all, uh, for uh, CSA, uh, as an example, for uh, all three interest rate uh, swaps uh, with the financial counterparty, difference uh, between um, SACVA and BACVA uh, was uh, between two and three million. BACVA uh, required two to three million more um, capital than SACVA. Um, and uh, it's not uh, as well. Uh, mostly challenges are coming from SACCR. Um, just a reminder to, uh, to implement BACVA you have to and uh, that will come with the new uh, mandatory uh, SACCR calculations um, uh, or IMA but we think uh, most banks will do SACCR. Um, and uh, challenges are you need uh, more pricing information, uh, you have to cluster into hedging sets, uh, you have to treat a complex deal, uh, recognition of uh, CSA, these are all challenges which come from SACCR. Uh, but of course uh, SACVA is, uh, is harder, that uh, requires implementing uh, full revaluation um, Monte Carlo, um, um, the engine which create basically uh, exposure profiles um, and uh, which uh, uh, does all the calculations. Um, this engine should be suitable for trading and hedging. It's, uh, it shouldn't necessarily um, pass a kind of IMA uh, approval by regulators, but uh, still it has to be uh, suitable for accounting purposes and for trading and hedging um, and also be part of active managing of XVA risk. So it should handle all the effects like netting, collateral and uh, so on. Uh, but main challenge we think for SACVA uh, specifically is calculation of sensitivities. Uh, like in, a, in, a, in, in brief, they must be fast and accurate, but this is a very hard. There is always balance between uh, fast calculation and accurate calculation. And uh, let's discuss how to uh, produce sensitivity which are really fast and accurate. Uh, most of uh, banks calculate um, CVA sensitivity using so-called uh, phylogen. Uh, so uh, to make this calculation more efficient, one has first to look at uh, how uh, efficient uh, are CVA calculations themselves. And here, of course, like effective streaming algorithms and fast random number generators are uh, very important. Uh, also, uh, it's not just simulation, uh, it's also a pricing of your portfolio along the paths. So just replacing uh, your regular pricer, which use probably some um, sophisticated interpolation, extrapolation methods with something, something simpler like linear interpolation also can reduce time significantly. Also, one has to look at optimal selection of simulation dates because having fixed grid sometimes produce simulations at points which are not really interest uh, for CVA calculations. Um, and uh, one or two factors, same analytical integration uh, if you don't really uh, uh, need uh, more. These are kind of uh, general CVA uh, recommendation, but uh, for uh, specific for CVA sensitivities, one can look at the following methodologies, dependency graph and analyze uh, trades, which trades and risk drivers uh, weren't really bumped, uh, so they can be stored and reused. Um, or bucketing, uh, so shifting uh, several rates simultaneously instead of shifting them individually. Uh, this also is consistent with um, a regulatory recommendation for SACVA uh, because uh, they want uh, calculating uh, uh, interest rate sensitivity in one year, one to five, and uh, longer than five year bucket. So it doesn't make sense to uh, bump like uh, uh, some cash rate or three month future and so on. Uh, alternatively to 
to this final difference or bump in recalc, one can think about um, automatic or algorithmic differentiation methods, um, eleven calculus, uh, uh, alternative likelihood ratio methods, um, or using fast GPU implementation. So, uh, so there is like um, set of different methodologies, and uh, one can use uh, some set which is suitable for their particular purposes to make SEVA sensitivities, um, as I said, faster and uh, more reliable. And uh, with this, I uh, pass to Holger, um, who will uh, give the outlook for the future for the banks. Okay, thank you very much, Dmitri. I hope everybody can hear me again. Um, the outlook or conclusion and the outlook will only be one slide, but uh, ahead of uh, going to that one, I already want to encourage you to uh, post questions. So uh, right after the following slide, we're going to open up the Q&A session. So it would be good if we already had a one or two questions that we can start with then. Okay, so summing up uh, what you might have heard, uh, but more importantly, looking forward, what is going to change, what is going to happen if and, and when once uh, we see uh, this draft 325 of the BCBS uh, become effective as part of the European law, but also as a part of, of the worldwide electrical reserves. Um, I think generally we might predict, uh, may want to predict three uh, major impacts that we expect to happen in the banking business. The first one would be that we uh, think uh, it's, it's even closely related to what Dmitri has just presented. Uh, we think we, we may see uh, more sophisticated XVA tools uh, in the market. Uh, it's certainly not something which will be uh, very, very striking or obvious for, for the bigger banks because they have their sophisticated platforms anyway. But for mid-sized banks, uh, the SACVA uh, alternative might be something that they are very keen on looking into it. So, so it might be uh, very attractive for banks, uh, particularly for those who have already uh, started investing into a, a scalable and, and generic XVA framework, maybe for accounting purposes, maybe for trading purposes, ideally for, for both but who are only using it at the, at the moment uh, for, for their uh, current pre deal pricing, for their IFRS uh, accounting and stuff like that, but they are not optimizing their regulatory capital for the CBA risk charge so far because they're just not running an internal model. Um, for, for such platforms, it might be actually easy or at least not that uh, complex, uh, not a big project to, to add. Uh, sensitivities, Mitri has just shown you uh, how to do that in, in practice. Uh, so, for instance, adding uh, additional server capacity could already do the trick. Maybe you need to stabilize and, and work on more robust sensitivity, sensitivities, but uh, still it should be doable. You already uh, have your position in there if you're running such a system. Um, yeah, so it could be either by increasing grid capacities that would be uh, just uh, just more blades or whatever, more servers, more uh, computational cores. On the other hand, there are more uh, advanced uh, algorithms uh, and, and technical options like uh, GPUs or, or something to leverage that. Um, yeah, so for mid-sized banks, uh, SACVA should be uh, really interesting to look into. Uh, IMA approach is more complex and, and uh, you'll need an internal model for the CCR charge as well, which is uh, still something that uh, most banks would find rather tedious. For instance, in, in the German market, we are not seeing too many of them at the moment. The second bigger thing uh, we are expecting is uh, that there is going to be a tendency towards more active management of XVA position just because it's something that uh, is required in order to leverage the SACVA approach. So particularly for current front office users uh, on such a platform, working on such a platform as mentioned on the left hand side, uh, the increased requirement of this active CVA, XVA management uh, functionality 
might be very beneficial. So it, it might help uh, to convince stakeholders to adopt more powerful uh, XVA management tools, uh, which is certainly a benefit for for position keeping and, and, and hedge information and, and, and everything. Uh, and it might also help them to, to find good reasons to centralize the XVA expertise in, in the capital markets in, uh, on, the, on the trading floor in, in that department. Sometimes at the moment we find uh, a tendency in, in, in small to mid-sized banks that sometimes in the risk department for accounting purposes there's actually more XVA expertise than in front office and it's, it's certainly something that for traders becomes more and more important and, and so actually this is kind of the, the interesting part where regulation could help uh, front office people uh, to, to get proper uh, tools for uh, doing their daily work. Um, there's also another comment, it's, it's certainly important to notice that uh, for CVA there are also a lot of good reasons and uh, there's historic evidence that maybe you also need to actively decide or be very aware that uh, sometimes the better decision is not to hedge. So some bigger banks uh, have actually sunk a lot of money in, in hedging credit spread risk uh, maybe five years ago or something. Um, here it could actually help uh, people to say, yeah, I want to leverage uh, reduced uh, CVA capital charge by using CVA risk still uh, I, I'm not going to try to to hedge out all sensitivities, particularly credit spread sensitivities, because I'm just lacking the right tools, the right uh, CDS uh, instruments in order to hedge. And the very last comment regarding active management of XVA position, um, closely related, we think that KVA uh, may become more important after this. Uh, in the, in the European Union, uh, there's currently the situation that the CRR uh, is providing this corporate exemption, so uh, corporate, uh, for, for deals against corporates, uh, the CVA risk charge is, is currently taking out, uh, taking out under certain circumstances and uh, it's, it's not sure whether that's going to remain or, or not in the future. Uh, but if in the future the CVA risk also for uh, have a view on your charge that to clients. And so finally, uh, there's also there have been a lot of other sources on lower tier banks uh, afterwards. So uh, first thing is uh, that their derivatives business model may be just not, not big enough, there's not enough money in it uh, in order to transition to SACVA. Uh, a sophisticated uh, CVA frame, framework as of now, if you don't run uh, Monte Carlo uh, simulation at the moment, then starting from scratch and getting so certainly not a small step, it's at least a medium-sized uh, step and it also takes uh, some work uh, and, and, and some budget for such a framework, even, even though the vendor market is now much more sophisticated than it was a few years ago. Um, Maintaining an active CVA management function will also for smaller banks, I, at least you need a few dedicated resources who are going to do that on a daily basis and uh, such that you can demonstrate to, to the regulator and the auditor that, uh, that you are fulfilling the requirements to run SACVA. On the other hand, if you're not able to leverage SACVA, then BACVA, as Dmitri has demonstrated, just regarding the numbers might simply be too costly in order to stay in the game. It depends actually on how uh, expensive regulatory capital is to your bank. Uh, there might be smaller banks who rate. On, on, on the other hand, still, if the kind of regulatory exposure that would also go into your KVA and your capital cost that you somehow, it might uh, become very difficult uh, to sustain the business with uh, BACVA in the end. And that's the very first. smaller banks will face a lot of pressure to keep their uh, derivatives business uh, up and running and, and maintain that and, and, uh, and, and uh, if, if they're actually deciding not to uh, keep that up anymore then uh, there, there's some chance that your other business will suffer from something like 
uh, loans and mortgages or a, a project financing business with your corporates, uh, but at the same time you're not really able to offer them a, a tool like a vanilla swap uh, exchanging fixed to float, then uh, it's certainly something which will be a downside to your business in the long run. Okay, that's it so far from my end on the uh, potential impacts uh, as we may foresee them as of now. Thank you very much for attending the webinar and following the presentation so far. We are very happy to send you the white paper we've mentioned with all the numbers in more detail. Um, we are also happy to send you a copy of the slides uh, presented today. Uh, just uh, get back in contact with the organizers afterwards. Um, the floor is now open for the Q&A session. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please type them using the Citrix tool uh, that you should have on your screen that you've uh, logged uh, on to, and uh, I'll try to pick the most relevant ones and uh, assign, assign them either to Sebastian or Dmitri or uh, myself. So, at the moment, uh, I think the questions are still about to start off. There's one I can spot which is maybe a bit longer, but if I, I summarize correctly, it would be uh, how difficult it is, how much work we can foresee to, to adopt the SACVA method uh, for a bank, what's actually needed to be done uh, on maybe on a, on a project level. Um, Sebastian, do you want to answer that? Uh, well, yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the big thing is probably to, to, to be able to calculate CDA sensitivities in, in a proper manner and uh, to set up the, the um, CDA desk. So, it's, it's just not, not only the, the project work which is going to be significant, but also uh, the impact on, on how the um, how, how the business uh, uh, will will be run in, in a bank. So how the CVA desk is going to be set up, how it somehow communicates within the institution, and I think that's that's, that's the the bigger thing. So and then then you need the regulatory approval, um, which should be okay. Um, and, and some project work on, I believe, sensitivities and, and probably technical stuff. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, we uh, also got more questions. Uh, I'll try to pick out a, a few ones. What do we know will be finalized? For, for the second one methodology to be finalized, uh, I, I don't know exactly about times. At, at least to me, it's, it's quite obvious that uh, if SACCR, at least for the European legislation, gets out uh, KISS results and, and when they're going to be published? What I have heard is that the KISS results will be published within this year. Consultational process, whether there's the paper, which will be the critical pass, um, is, is not only the SACCR, but, but more the FRTP part. So, as I already said during the webinar, um, risk rates have changed uh, for the market risk FRTB um, as with the with the final version, and I don't see CDA risk uh, getting effective earlier than than 2019, 2020 or so. So after FRTB, of course. Okay. So the the most recent question is the one that's easily foreseen and maybe it's difficult to ask how likely do you think uh, a continued exemption for CVA charge um, at the moment it's uh, I guess it's just difficult to say whether this corporate exemption will uh, remain from, uh, other nations from other sides uh, I, I think at the moment uh, you can't really put a proper um, There's another question uh, asked by Antonio, so that is, can CVA charges impact on choice of uh, CCP clearing for a bank? That's certainly a much bigger story. Um, Dmitri, do you want to get on that, or, or Sebastian? Uh, 
Yeah, maybe uh, I can start. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, probably um, will impact not exactly the choice between CCPs, but definitely it will push uh, more out of the uh, 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 over the counter CCP uh, because uh, KVA think out of this regulatory is uh, part of the uh, profit, uh, kind of uh, in uh, for over the counter or. Uh, 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 out of out of clearing uh, trading with clearing so on so that won't be the uh, issue this uh, new BACV won't be issue for uh, if you go to going to choose that uh, will be uh, decided probably by your um, uh, MVA as I said but um, uh, definitely this this new numbers new uh, regulatory um, uh, recommendation will affect KVA and this is part of uh, non-clearing out of the clearing trade. Yep. Okay, um, next question, certainly also an interesting one is would the CVA hedges create market risk RWA, uh, so risk weighted assets? In, um, I guess if you're actually doing CVA hedges, so, so it could be exposure hedges, it could also be spread hedges, then the least thing you would do is you, you would hedge on the interbank market and uh, you would hedge under uh, collateralized uh, uh, circumstances. So uh, the least thing you would try to avoid new exposure by doing it perfectly uh, collateralized. So I, I guess that overall impact of the CVA hedges on your CCR charge should be uh, rather minor or non-existent. Uh, Sebastian, would you agree? Yes, yes, furthermore, um, I think a critical point on that is that uh, the uh, exposure hedges or credit spread hedges have to be managed by the new CVA desk, and if it's done by that, then those hedges are considered under the CVA risk approach instead of the market risk approach. Okay. Uh, the next one is again maybe one for you because it's again asking for likelihoods. Uh, so Nasnin is asking how likely is it that the internal model approach uh, in, in the new uh, draft uh, may be dropped by the regulator? Well, I think the, the interesting question is whether there will be two approaches at the end because um, even the, the consultation paper um, includes the big question, will there be an internal model being necessary to, uh, to qualify for the FRTB approach? So if it's like that, um, I would believe that those two options may probably be merged. Um, so let's see what's the answer from, uh, for, to that question is um, yeah, by, by the industry. Yeah, on the other hand, I think uh, everything that we presented uh, today is pretty much under the assumption that the SACVA will open up to all banks and not only those who are running internal model for counterparty credit risk. Otherwise, uh, given the enormous increase on the BACVA side, it would just uh, ask most of the banks, uh, since they're not running an internal model for CCR, that, that they will have to reserve much more capital for CVA risk and, and that doesn't really seem appropriate to me, at least. Um, I'm still browsing uh, the question questions. Uh, Dimitri, there's maybe one for you. So Thomas is asking, in the formulas, both new and old, it seems that the risk weight can easily go above 1,250%. Uh, 1, Don't you think that that is a major problem given the capital uh, should not cover increases in market risk? Um, honestly, uh, we uh, haven't analyzed um, from this point of view, uh, but um, what can I say? This uh, risk weight uh, came definitely as a, a surprise before we started kind of uh, looking at the numbers. We didn't realize that uh, their contribution in addition to SACCR can lead to such uh, drastic uh, drastic changes. Um, regarding uh, what you're asking on the market risk, um, um, we, we haven't uh, compared, we haven't looked at this, uh, at this aspect. Yeah. Um, there's maybe one on the 
understanding of the first part. Um, so in, uh, Jeremy is asking, in terms of methodology, what are the differences between the current advanced approach and the FRTB SA CVA? Maybe, Sebastian, you can give a very brief summary or, or repeat that once again. And so, so to repeat that, so the, the new SACDA approach is basically also, again, like the BA approach, a big formula and, and no internal modeling on CDA sensitivities. Um, be open for everyone, um, even without having this uh, necessary for the for the current um, advent, I think that's the, the big new thing uh, regarding uh, the, the big new thing regarding um, yeah um, SACDA. Yeah, right. Um, Emmanuel has asked a question. Um, hi all, what are your views on DVA? Is it going to be taken into account as a contra account to CDA? Uh, I guess regarding the CDA risk charge, it's been uh, pretty much agreed that it's only going to look into CVA and, and, and doesn't uh, take into account the opposite side of, of DVA or any other opinions. No, I totally agree. Yeah. It's not even now, uh, it's even now dropped from accounting um, requirements, DVA, so it's really a kind of well, step system. I'd, I'd say, Dmitri, that for accounting, DVA is not a requirement. DVA is a benefit. So, but yeah, uh, certainly uh, taking into account all the FVA and the particular funding benefit uh, discussion, there, there is certainly uh, also some uh, more generalized understanding of what should be understanding of what should be taken into the IFRS uh, accounting sheet. Uh, progressing on, on, the, on the market. Right. Uh, we are approaching 5 o'clock. I think we are running out of time. There are maybe 5 to 10 uh, questions on top of that that we couldn't answer so far. Some are maybe more technical. I suggest that in case your question hasn't been answered now, uh, you, you feel free to write us an email uh, to the organizers and we will make sure to, to answer all your questions by email afterwards if that's okay for you. So thank you very much for attending this session. Given the questions afterwards, uh, I, I think there was pretty much interest in the topic also regarding the number of attendees we could get. Thank you very much. Uh, we pretty much hope to speak to you next time uh, soon. Thank you. Bye.